Now, the other computing subject that you may have an opportunity to teach is information and communication technologies. Now, this is an applied subject, so it is aimed towards a vocational pathway. It can, in theory, contribute towards students' um, university entrance, their ATAR, but it is not generally aimed towards that. Um, so, as an applied subject, it's very much more focused on practical skill development, not theory development and higher order thinking concept development and, and so forth. There should still be some of that, but in the main, it's very much more um, practically focused and aimed at developing some specific skills for your students. So, um, essentially, in the applied subjects, students will do a product proposal and a project for four units. Again, one each semester over their two years of their study. And in designing your program of study, the syllabus provides you with six possible units. So in practice, you choose four from the six and you teach those or you offer those at your school and your students study them and you teach them and prepare them for those. And in each of those units, they do a product proposal and then a project essentially around creating that product. So the four units are robotics, app development, audio and video production, layout and publishing, digital imaging and modeling, and web development. Now it used to be broader. There used to be a lot more options um, where we could incorporate things like game design and um, a whole range of other elements, but it's been more streamlined in recent revisions. And it's actually currently undergoing another revision, which we'll talk about in the workshop as well. So you will or your school will have already chosen, if you're coming into an established program, four of those units that will be offered, and you'll teach those. Now, the syllabus documents go through and describe what's involved in teaching them, but it is much less prescriptive, very much more like digital technologies and the Australian curriculum, um, where it sets out the general learning outcomes and what students need to learn. You get to set the projects, you get to assess the, the projects. So there's no um, external oversight and things of that nature as we see with the general subjects. So a lot more flexibility and you can be more creative as a result. So you can set in place different approaches and ways of um, focusing on different elements within the curriculum. So for example, there's um, still game development um, units done in some schools where they're using the app development environment or some of them are using the web development um, unit to frame the development of computer games and they're using the other units to support that such as digital imaging and modeling where students will create 3D models within a game development environment such as Unity and then they might use audio and video production for creation of animated scenes within a game development environment. So they've set it all their course around game development using these modules. Whereas other schools may have chosen a very much more, say, a digital movie making um, theme through their four units, where they've structured things around that approach. Others that are using a robotics focus um, have the robotics unit where they learn the technical aspects of the robotics then they may use audio and video production for creating a, um, a video environment for their robots, where they're linking it up to video cameras and the robot is moving autonomously around using video and the video production elements are incorporated into that. So you can stretch the intent of some of these units to fit an overall unit. So an overall course design that you are focusing on. So again, have a look at the uh, project proposal and project templates so you get a bit of an idea of what the assessments involved 
and look at the syllabus documents. Now I've provided both the 2019 and the 2024 syllabus documents. Of course there are schools going in a transition between the two at the moment but that'll give you a bit of an idea of what's involved in teaching of the information and communication technologies applied subject. Now the third aspect of digital technologies in senior schools is that some schools are offering um, vocational education and training courses. Now these might be certificate three in IT or some of them are in game development where they've decided to keep that focus. Of course the ICT subject sort of drifts away from doing what they wanted to achieve. So you will find schools that are offering vocational programs. Um, now to do that, they do have to be a registered training organization, which involves a lot of paperwork. Um, and if schools are going down that path, they normally have a deputy or someone in the school that is involved with overseeing that process. Of course, it is a, a quite an administrative burden. And it also becomes a bit of a burden for the teachers involved because you have to have what's called industry currency where you have to, and a whole range of other requirements to be able to be a registered training organization. Now, some schools use an external provider to be the registered training organization. So that looks after a lot of the administrative burden and is, is still taught in the school, but the administrative processes are done by an external body. And some schools have um, school-based apprenticeships or traineeships as well, where um, there can be an additional processes that the students can go through. Now, different schools will have different mixes. In the main, if it's a more academically orientated school, it will focus on the general subjects and you'll have digital solutions. A lot of schools will have a mix of both and some schools will just have the applied subjects. Of course, the students there are generally aiming towards a more vocationally orientated career pathways. And that's the mix of um, syllabuses available within our schools in Queensland.